Hello and welcome to Wisdom 101. My name is Nate Guidani and my guest today is Paula Free and she is the founder of Power On With Limb Loss, which is an advocacy group that helps people who are dealing with amputation, limb loss and other physical challenges. And I'm so excited to have you join me today. Oh, Thank I'm you. I'm excited too. Thank you for inviting me, Nate. Absolutely. So we met actually several years ago. We were just trying to figure out, um, and uh, you had come to one of my bow yoga classes, yeah. and um, and I found out about the Power One with Limb Loss program, and we started getting involved. And I wanted everybody to know about it. Yeah. So yeah. could you tell me how did Power On with Limb Loss get started? So we, my husband and I, had a motorcycle accident in '04. And in 2011, after, oh, what, seven years, six surgeries, we decided to amputate my left leg. It just wasn't getting better. I was looking at more and more surgeries. And uh, so I did. And about two years went by. I had to have a revision because I fell a couple of times. And uh, that, you know, once the revision was done and I healed from that and built back the strength, and got a prosthetic on. I met a young lady that mentioned she, she was an amputee and she just did a 5K run. And wow. I was blown away. You know, it's like, had, I'm still trying to figure out how to put one foot in front of the other and just walk and more or less run. It's like, how do you actually do the mind body control thing and actually do that? It just seems so extreme. So prior to that, I was trying to be as active as I could. I did a lot of swimming. I did some swimming aerobics classes. And that's about the time I met you. Mm -hmm. um, what can I do to get my body in shape and, and learn to be more balanced with this, uh, pretty much feels like a two by four on the end of your leg kind of mentality. And uh, I, I actually started running I did very well, so in the last several years, I've ran some 5Ks, some six-mile butte-to-butte runs, which everybody in Eugene kind of knows what that is. And when I was 64, I ran a half a marathon. Wow. So bringing it back to meeting Nate and the bow yoga just was wonderful because you weren't beating your body up. You didn't have to get in cold water to swim. You could do so many things to regain balance and strength. And I really liked it, so eventually I took your class to teach bow yoga. It's been a long journey to just get it done and then decide how I want to go do this. So right about the time I started running 5Ks or even just running a little bit, it's like nobody wants to go right there. It's like that five-year-old mentality. You don't want to go out and play in the yard by yourself or ride a bike by yourself. You want friends to go do it with you. So I actually got on the radio and TV and anything I could think of. I was interviewed by the Register Guard, our local newspaper, looking for other amputees that wanted to go do these things and have fun. And one thing led to another. And a friend of mine said, you know, you should start a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And the conferences I was going to was costing me about $2,000 because they were clear across mm -hmm. the other side of the United States. And I kept trying to get those people, the uh, Amputee Coalition, the um, Camp No Limits for Children to come here and do events and do things here. And it just it's not big enough for them. So that nonprofit idea started really kicking in and I could raise money and do things to be able to be part of something and not only go to the Amputee Coalition conferences across the United States, but maybe even take a couple of other amputees with me. And I've been able to do that. So mm -hmm. I just, um, I guess our mission and our mission statement, we support amputees, but we also help support their families and we build the camaraderie in the community and friendships. Uh, as, as you saw earlier today, we did a little boat yoga class and some very good friends of mine came that mm -hmm. also have a whole family of kids that have special needs. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I remember uh, coming to uh, Paula would put on uh, Power on Limb Loss conferences, and we would have people coming from all around the country, different speakers, and the whole local community turned up, and it was just amazing. Like like you said, to see people finding friends, finding connections, finding support. Um, it was so inspiring and, and amazing to uh, to be a part of that, and um, I just I'm just so impressed with what you've created and. Um, what do you see as the mission? What is the vision? Where do you, um, where do you want to continue to uh, take power on with limb loss? What's uh, next? <laughs> uh, I, I think my energy and my mind goes way beyond what I could actually physically do. And we're at a point and a stage in the life of power on with limb loss. And we've almost been in existence for seven years, yeah. which is just a mind blower. It's been that many years. And um, our three main programs are a peer visiting program that we match amputees with other amputees, age uh, amputee sites, unless they don't mind. I do quite a bit of them myself. We're building a team. I'm also a trainer for amputee peer visitors, which we're reconstructing the whole program because now everything's pretty much on Zoom due to COVID. So, uh, which is really good because in so many ways, like our peer visiting and our support group meetings, I might have one, two, I might have 20. And those were kind of back in the days, two years ago, where we met in person. Mm. Now we've learned how to do it virtually, which in a way is a really good thing because we can reach other amputees that don't even have to leave their bedroom or their living room or the hospital room or rehab. So we've grown, even though COVID, we call it the silver lining of, of COVID. We have met amputees all over the United States and people that would normally not be able to come to our support meetings. And then my most favorite thing of all is our events and our conferences. Mm -hmm. So we like to do rock wall climbing, kayaking. We did two kayaking events this, this year. We plan on doing three ski events, mm -hmm. which is with a company that has all the adaptive equipment we need. I just take the people. Mm -hmm. So again, friendships, uh, things that are really, you know, like you kind of teary eyed all day because what's going on is so amazing mm -hmm. in the friendships that we've built. So. One of the issues and the biggest part of our organization is getting the medical professionals all in a nutshell mm -hmm. to know that we're here and what we do. So I plan on starting a pilot program for medical professionals, whether they be um, doctors or their schedulers or nurses or uh, county case managers, and I guess I could go on for a long time, but. I want everybody to know we're here and that we can help these people. So as we grow, that will help us grow. Mm -hmm. And then plan more events. The 2022, it's, I, pretty, I got a horrific year planned with mm -hmm. fun events mm -hmm. and we're growing there yeah. and, and incorporating more and more people and, and that is my favorite part. So mm -hmm. the more, doctors can refer people to us whether they're maybe going to lose their limb mm. or they've been born without limbs or limb loss congenitive amputees it doesn't matter we're we're here for them mm. and uh, i got a call from a, a lady the other day that in uh probably within the next month she's going to lose her leg above the knee and she joined our meeting i don't know how she found me if she probably googled it because she never said, and then we've talked a couple of times since then. She was going to try to be here today, but mm -hmm. she lives out of sorts. So anyway, we're growing and doing more stuff, you might say, and, and building our family. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think is my favorite thing. I remember uh, coming to the conferences, and, and it really is incredible how you set up these opportunities for people to challenge themselves to do things they may think they couldn't do. Like you said, people were climbing on rocks, there was a slack line, there was archery, um, and, and bringing in adaptive experts who can make things accessible, make things work for people. Because I imagine, as you said, after experiencing a limb loss or an amputation, um, what does that feel like? And, and uh, what, it, what are, um, 
what kind of challenges, you know, emotionally as well as the obvious physical challenges come up with that? Huge, huge. Um, and everyone's different in every way possible. Some people go through a huge amount of grieving. I didn't think I did. Some people get depressed. Mm -hmm. Your mind tells you, wow, I'll never be able to do that again. Mm -hmm. You know, how I run? Furthest thing from my mind. Mm -hmm. Go dancing with my husband? Mm -hmm. well, that's probably not going to happen. You know, and then mm -hmm. we went out dancing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to, I have a really good example. A friend of mine that I knew prior to losing her leg, we knew each other. And I also work in a senior community as a hairdresser and nail technician. And I do everything I can do to never limp and never show that I might hurt or my back stoved up or anything. And I, I guess I do a pretty good job of it because she lost her leg and her whole family was falling apart. They couldn't believe, oh my gosh, how are you gonna, he'll never be able, oh, and she was coming out of being sedated and told them, no, 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 you guys don't understand. I'm going to be fine mm. because I know this other girl that is absolutely fine and does mm. everything she wants to do and runs around all day long, mm -hmm. you know, like a crazy <laughs> lady almost, and does these things with no problem at all. Not knowing that I was setting that good of an example, mm. that made me feel so good when she told me that story. So one of the other stories she told is being a little sedated after three surgeries, the doctor that she had never met because she was pretty much sedated each time he came in, mm -hmm. came in and kind of went raw, 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 because that's what she was hearing. And he said, baloney. Well, I'm a below the knee amputee. <laughs> I can use my knee. And what she heard was baloney. <laughs> she leans so back in her chair and she, or in the bed and she thought, baloney, I hate baloney. <laughs> Why couldn't he have offered me salami or bacon <laughs> or, you know, a grilled cheese sandwich? <laughs> baloney? Ew. And if another amputee would have walked in the hospital room right after that guy left, like me or even someone else that walks in, it would have been a real eye-opener for a new amputee. Mm. And when she told me, of course, we were like falling on the ground in her kitchen laughing about this, <laughs> but how, how amazing to, for that to happen. And to be able, be able to meet people, like I was just telling you the story of the lady that will be amputated soon. Yeah. She met on a Zoom meeting with, there was maybe 12 other amputees on that meeting, and she was so supercharged from, I have all these new friends, mm -hmm. and they're amputees, and I can just see by your suggestions and your lifestyles and what you do that I'm going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to set that in somebody's mind before they start tormenting themselves and right. telling themselves that, Oh, I'm going to be so depressed, or mm. I'll never be able to go dancing again, and that right. kind of stuff. I mean, how, that's just huge. Right. It's absolutely huge. Wow. And so, yes, at our conferences, we had keynote speakers that brought to the conference amazing things that they accomplished. Katie okay. Sullivan was mm -hmm. the last one. Nate's been to three. Mm -hmm. Our other two we had to cancel due to COVID. But she's born congenital above the knee, we still refer to her as an amputee, limb loss, and she set world records in the Paralympics back in like 2011. Uh, went to college, she's an actress, she's been on some amazing films, she's been on stage, she sings. So born that way, her parents treated her just like the other kids kind of thing. You, you can go over there and get that candy bar by yourself and she would learn to do it. And it gave her the strength to grow up and accomplish outrageously fantastic things. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of speakers we try to bring. And then like Nate said, people without arms shooting Arrows. archery. Yep. And you know, it, we'll find a way to make this work for you. My little buddy Joe is now 16, <laughs> and he's missing his arms below his elbows, 
and to see him climb to the top of the 50 foot rock wall yep. was incredible you know i remember that and and also hearing him rock out on the drums he was he's an incredible drummer um it's it's really really inspiring and uh you've created a platform an opportunity for people to shine and share their gifts and um, if people want to get involved, if people want to become a speaker, if they want to come as an attendee or a vendor, uh, how can they find out more information about it? You can literally Google Paula Free, mm -hmm. or you could Google Power On With Limb Loss, or you could Google Amputee Support in Eugene, Springfield, Lane County, or you can go to our website, which is poweronwithlimloss.com. And we are trying to post stuff way in advance. Mm -hmm. Like right now I have, um, this is almost November, nothing planned because we're working on two or three things for right after, well, in December and after the first of the year. So in December, December 4th, and it's on our website, we're going to have a holiday party. It will be on Zoom mm -hmm. and we will play games like bingo and it'll be a holiday theme and we'll have a raffle wheel and I haven't figured out the rest of it yet, but we will have it figured out by then. And on December 11th, we're going to have an archery shoot out at Botech, which is on Highway 99 in Eugene. And we'll have some really good shooters there that will help the other shooters. We did it last year. We had a little girl missing fingers on one hand and we actually made a sort of a prosthetic that would switch from either hand mm. and it wouldn't work for somebody that was above the elbow or way up here but it worked for her because if it was a hand amputation or fingers mm. and we'd strap it on the wrist and it had a release on it and she was able to pull the bow back and then mm -hmm pulled that back so it worked out really well mm. then I finally just gave her a sock I, for some reason uh -huh. I stuck yeah. a sock in there that just cushioned uh -huh. and she did real, real well she yeah. actually liked the sock better it was more comfortable yeah. but we helped Joe so referring to Joe as the drummer yeah. you should see him now because we have made two prosthetic arms mm. with a device I'm going to go back and forth on this a little bit it's a device on the end of his arms that he can hold the drumsticks. Oh, wow. And now, instead of a Nike headband that he right, used to strapped. have up here, mm -hmm. and he have to lean forward and drum, he can drum like this and mm -hmm. hit the cymbals and do that. Also, you can pop off these devices and pop another device mm -hmm. on. So what we did is we put a hand grip where he can hold the bow, and then we put a tab on the string. He kind of does it backwards where he grabs the tab with his teeth and pulls the bow back and mm -hmm. it is so good. Wow. So we're really proud that we've been able to help some of our, especially our amputee kids, do these kind of things. You met mm -hmm. Jaya. Yes. And in fact, you showed Jaya a lot of bow, mo bow, bow yoga moves yeah. because he sits in a wheelchair all day. But he's also doing um, wheelchair basketball, yeah. which we helped him get a wheelchair, mm. better wheelchair to do that with. Wonderful. And you know, it's just like the rest of us sitting, mm -hmm. we tend to sit and do this, and you showed him things that he could stretch back and help him okay. all the way around. And he's part of our, one of the faces of the kids with power on of limb loss, I guess mm -hmm. I could say. I remember uh, Jay, and, and uh, you said he, he's sitting a lot, but I remember him going up in his wheelchair and doing handstand push-ups. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, some of the creativity involved, you know, with <clears throat> limb loss, you know, which could affect so many different parts of our body in so many different ways, a lot of creativity is required. And that's what I really appreciate what Paul's done with Bo Yoga, because, you know, uh, in the yoga world, there's a lot of interest and a lot of need for accessibility for having new inventions, new creativity. Um, Paula really showed me how we can use the bow staff in a lot of ways to make yoga more accessible. And Very I'm learning cool. a lot from you too. And, um, <laughs> it's, it's just wonderful. I really appreciate what you're doing for the community. Thank you so much. And for everyone out there, 
please get involved. Check out the website. I'm going to link to it so you can um, have a link directly. Hopefully you can join us for one of the conferences. If you're an amputee or an ally, if you want to get involved, uh, check out poweronwithlimloss.com and check out Paula Free. She's doing amazing things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.